just like this introduction. So um, I want to talk about business first, and then the rest of this class we're going to just hang out because it, it, I didn't want to quite start like right off the dime, but there is some really important things that I want to talk about. Um, did, did you guys have a, my AP Classroom account? Did AP email you for it about the content for this class? I'll be real with you. I don't check my email anymore. My laptop broke. You check your school email though, right? No. That's bad news. Too far gone. Yeah. Yeah, my laptop broke over break. Your MacBook? Yeah. Your school one? The reason it says it'll connect, it's connected to the Wi-Fi with like the three signals, but it'll go straight to saying like no internet. Yeah, you guys. Oh. Think it's you know, that's mine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I they'll be able to figure it out they'll before. Fix it. The, oh, what would you like? Yeah, or, or an ish today. Just let your ish teacher know, and then they'll. Because Mr. Morning, do we have to do anything? Huh? <laughs> That's right. I'm your ish teacher. Oh. You should have just raised your hand again. Uh, it, it's been a nice long break, as you can tell. Um. So again, I want to talk business first, and then I want to hear about your breaks. We can just hang out. Um, Brody, I was saying. There is a really important update to this class that you guys, I think, will be especially excited for. Um, it's kind of nuts to me, but um, in this class, we have 10 units, right? We got through unit five, so we got halfway. We were right on time. It worked out great. The last five units are a little shorter, and so it puts us right on track to end unit 10, I think, like, if we follow their pacing, it's, like, two weeks before the AP test, or May 5th, which is great. We would have two weeks to review everything, take some practice tests, answer any questions, sort out everything before the test. Now, <laughs> they cut three units off of this class and the test. Are you serious? I'm not even kidding you. Yes. So, so units eight, nine, and ten are cut. Wait. So what you're telling me? They're removed from this class, and they're removed from the AP test. So what you're telling me is that are they doing this for all the AP classes now? No, 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 no. Just this this class, I think, is the sole exception to like all the other classes. They're they ask colleges and universities and everybody, like, hey, can we trim this down because of COVID? And the, almost every other class was saying, like, no, we need all this material, so keep on as normal. AP Physics 1 specifically was, like, the exception where units 8, 9, and 10, which is... I can't even read. And what? We just got done electric, five. Unit 8 yeah. is electric charge and electric force. Unit 9 is DC circuits, like electric circuits. And then 10 is mechanical waves and sound. See, I kind of wanted to do the electric circuit thing. Yeah, I know. Dang it. You guys are excited for the ones they're cutting. After Come on. After the test, after the test, after the test, yeah. that means we could potentially do... We can, we can do cool stuff with it. Like, sure. yeah. We're getting out of school. Oh, okay. oh, we're getting out on May 23rd. Congratulations but on to the 23rd. No, the 23rd is a Sunday. That's graduation day. But oh, the I'm pretty sure they're dismissing. The 23rd is a Sunday? Yes, they're dismissing the seniors on like the 14th or something. Just the seniors? Yes. So the seniors get out of it. Yeah, so can we table that for now? That's so soon. So don't, table don't that. Have not anything for the last two weeks. Wait a second. I'm not, I'm but gonna... just, just back to this. So what I'm telling you guys is. It puts us in like a crazy position because we now have like a bunch of time to like three months mm -hmm. to get through two units. It's crazy. We were on pace, so we were following again those ten units. AP says like this unit should take about. I mean, it's up here. Like, unit one was supposed to take about sixteen to nineteen class periods. That's 50-minute class periods, so you have that. So yeah. approximately 10 classes for Unit 1. So I went by that pacing for me to understand how much progress we've been making. We were right on track, right? We finished Unit 5. I think it was technically like a day early, which was awesome. 
Um, and so then we were right on track with AP. It worked out great because that semester, right, one through five was first semester. It was going to be six through ten, second semester, but they're shorter units, so it makes sense. We can still do that before May because our test is May 5th. However, now we're in an even more crazy situation where we literally only have two units left and then get ready for the AP test. So, and I just learned about this over break. Um, it's really nice. Um, that being said, those of you that are interested in those units, like I, I want to, we're, we're still going to do stuff, but it, it'll just be, we're prioritizing, prep, yes, having fun. We need to prioritize that AP test. We're going to have a lot of time to practice, so we'll get to do lots of a full-blown AP session. Like, we could take practice tests in class. Like, we could do that for, like, a week straight if we wanted to, but, which sounds awful, but it's going to make give you that much more preparation for taking the real AP test, which is what I want. That's the whole goal is to help us understand all these topics and units and prepare us for that test. Um we can go and review stuff first, like, hey, what were some units that you really didn't get or stuff that you're, like, really not comfortable about? Let's go relearn those. Let's take time to do that before we start our, you know, official AP test preparation, whatever. We have a lot of flexibility. I still, I haven't got time to think through how I'm going to do that, um, what I'm going to do with the time. It, a lot of in, in my yes, and that's my main goal. We need to utilize that time to give you guys more preparation, and I'm going to do that. At the other hand, I'm going to try and at the same time slow down a little bit, not a lot, because I want us to get done. Right? There's no point slowing down if we don't need to slow down. But I want to slow down a little bit, spend a few more days on a given unit, so that we can kind of go slower do more review, like make sure we understand these units before moving on to the next one, just so you guys are that much more confident in that those topics. Um, I want to do that a little bit, but I also want to keep on pace like we have been so that we can finish the material and give lots of time for review to, to really have you guys figure out, you know, your weak points. Like, oh my gosh, like I do not know energy at all. I still don't know it. I need to work on energy or I need to work on free response questions because I tried one and it went terribly. Like work out those kinks, figure that stuff out. I want there to be a lot of time for that review process, that prep process for the AP test. But anyway, that's my like my big update for you guys that technically I got the email like the Friday of school, like the 18th when we went on break. But I was doing grades, and when I did, when I did grades, I closed my computer, and I literally did not open that until uh, last Tuesday, I think. And I opened it once just to check my email. So I thankfully had a legitimate break. It was much needed. It was great. Um, so I haven't really got back into the swing of things, so I can't tell you, like, hey, here's the full plan for this semester. Especially with this news, you know, me trying to incorporate this in. I'm glad you waited until this news. Why? Just because it made my day better. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a nice treat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was waiting, I waited, and I got official confirmation, like, from AP. They sent me an email and said, like, hey, by the way, here's your updated. So, um, one thing I want to show you, just so that you guys are clear of, like, what I'm telling you. It's not that I don't think you understand, but I want to make sure we all see this so we have done units one through five already so one was kinematics right motion dynamics was motion with the forces causing that motion right it wasn't just motion it was how the motion was actually caused unit three was circular motion and then universal gravitation Unit four was energy, super important unit. Potentially a quarter of the test comes from energy concepts. And then we also did momentum, another very important, potentially up to like 15% of the test. Um, we finished that.
that was the end of our semester. We were right on track. Everything was great. It would have been we did 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 this semester. And then we would have had, I think, like a week or two of nothing to do but review for the AP test. And the AP test, I'm pretty sure, is May 5th. Can you guys confirm that with me? Maggie, did I think I feel like you would have it marked fifth? Yeah, yeah. So May fifth is your guys' test. That's our kind of target date. So obviously that's way before the end of the school year. So after we come back, we can just do random physics. Like I'm like, hey, what are you interested in that's related to physics? And we can talk about it. Um, you guys, it sounds like seniors might be getting out like a week early, even. We'll deal with that. No big deal. That was the plan. Now, I'm telling you that units 8, electric charge and electric force. Units 9, which is DC circuits, electrical circuits. And then use it, unit 10, which is mechanical waves and sound. Those are cut from this class. It's basically like you highlighted those units and hit delete. They're no longer, I'm not going to teach them formally. And that you're not going to be tested over them. Is it only for this year under these circumstances? It's the, I'm pretty sure it's this year on. Oh. Yeah, which is a big change. What AP yeah. told me is that the rationale for that decision is universities and then AP as well. They see these topics, electric charge, DC circuits, and mechanical wave sound. Those are covered in what would be physics 2. Right at college, like where I went to school at Iowa, physics one was this class, was University of Iowa. Oh, <laughs> I didn't catch that quick enough. <laughs> anyway, at when I went to school, it, my engineering classes, physics one was this class. It was mechanics, motion, rotation, uh, energy, blah blah blah. That was physics one, a whole semester class on that, way more in-depth than what we did, a lot faster pace. Physics two was basically all about electricity, right? Electricity, magnetism, and then they also added kind of like the sound waves and stuff. So AP and then university's justification is like, yeah, it's okay to remove those from AP one, AP physics one, because those topics are really covered in physics too. And in, you know, the universities are saying our classes, physics one and two, are, are different than your physics. So yeah, delete eight, nine, and ten. We're okay with that. Again, AP physics, I'm pretty sure, was like AP physics one. It was the exception. Every other AP class, like Mr. Cunningham teaching AP chem, they, they have the same units. Nothing changed. Um, this was the exception. So I want to clarify, we will not do units 8, 9, and 10. And again, my general plan is units 6 and 7, we're going to start next class. We're going to do them like normal. The class will be what you've experienced before, just new unit. I'm going to go a little bit slower. right? If you look, unit 6 is really short. It would literally take a week if, you, if we met every day for 50 minutes, in a week we'd be done. It's a really short unit. Yeah, it's a, and partially because it's such a small, maybe 5% of the test. Now that percentage is going to be a little more because we're having less units. And then 7, it's 10 to 16 or 10 to 18. 10 to 16. Yeah, sorry. So, so you know, th this puts us, we'll say like two weeks I'm going to break it up. So normally this would be like two and a half of our class periods. Well, I'm going to, you know, add a day and a half or whatever. So I'll call it four class periods. Roughly two weeks, we'll finish unit six. Right, I'm going slower than their pacing because we have the time to do that. Unit seven, right? Round it up to 18, cut it in half because we have double, twice as long class periods. Wait, what percentage of the test would... Um... Eight, nine, and ten have constituted. Yeah, uh, because I was just thinking that if because whatever five plus seven plus 16, fourteen, so I, I'm terrible at mental math. We just 
26. That, that we're going to have to understand 1 through 7 better. Yeah. They're shaking out. Because I'm thinking, like, oh, yeah, or, they're losing those, but they're still not going to, like, necessarily shorten the test. Just yeah, like, they, they might a little bit, line. but they're also going to, you know, th these percentages go up. Yeah. Right? If, if a quarter of the test was energy, well, now you're removing a quarter of the test. So that chunk is bigger now. So that doesn't matter too much. You can generally look at like energy is a lot more important than circular motion. They're going to throw a couple of these, of course, but there's going to be way more energy questions. So therefore, this is more important. And it, and it is in physics. But um, the point is, when we get to unit seven, that'll take, say, nine class periods, roughly a month. Right. And that's me going a little slow. So we'll finish that. That puts us that puts us worst case scenario. We finish unit seven, the the required material at the end of February. That means we have basically all, all of March and all of April where we don't have content to cover. Nice. Not, however, we, we got to take advantage of that and use it to your benefit. Physics movie Friday. <laughs> we could do something along those lines. Hey, but I would want to stay, I wanna stay focused the on the during that free time when we're done. I would, in my head, I would think of let's go back and review all the weak points that, like, you know, Ethan's like, let's go do energy. Energy, I was a little iffy on. Let's go do that. And I'll be like, bam. So we'll take a couple days. We'll review energy, do some practice problems, get it fresh in your mind. I want to try and reteach some things, solidify it. And then I want to keep moving on. Like, what are some weak units that we want to go back and brush up on? And then, after we take some time to do that, I can imagine really shifting gears to do um, the AP test review. Right, so we can start taking practice tests, uh, like my review sessions. We can start doing FRQs. We'll have time in class to do FRQs together. Right, I can give you like 30 minutes and say like, hey guys, we got two FRQs for, you know, random units. That's what we're gonna do a, a mock practice test, but only you know a portion of it, and then we'll talk about it. Right. Yeah, I was gonna ask if we have one of those. The review sessions. Yes, I hope you guys still think that's a good idea. <coughs> Bless you. Thanks. Right? So we, I, I, I don't, I'd prefer not to do one this week. Um, we'll especially, we'll just be getting rolling. But, what? Do what? Do one today. Do one today. We could. I like that you said one today. Every after school, it was, But, but I will start doing review sessions probably next week. Um, and that way, most of those, we basically do FRQ questions, which is really good practice for, like, what the heck do these questions look like? Like, how is AP going to word them? Hopefully, you guys that have come to some of them see value in them, correct? Right? They're, they're really useful, good exposure. But it's really nice that we have a lot more time where I'm going to be able to expose all of you to, like, practice AP tests. And another practice AP test it might not sound fun, but I want you to understand, like, there's tremendous value in that. Like, you're going to get a, a sneak peek at what it will be like to take this big test. And to help you practice and learn along the way, it'll be great. So that, that's my big update for the class. Um, you're, I think my only class that my schedule, my class roster didn't change. You all are still in this class. I got my virtual students still. Um, so that's nice to just keep going. Um, trying to think of other things to update you on. That's really it. That, that was the big news that I wanted to share with you guys. It's good news. Um, hopefully you guys are excited about that. Obviously less material. Um, that means, don't forget, that means there will be more focus on units 1 through 7. I want you to understand that. We're going to, like you said, we'll have to Hopefully not learn them better, but get more comfortable and more ready for all these questions. Um, but it kind of helps us focus more, right? Instead of 10 units, we only got seven to worry about. That'll help us. 
we'll have more time. Um, I'm really excited. Um, and yeah, six unit six and unit seven, that's all we got left. Just, again, simple harmonic motion. Does anybody know, I want to talk a little bit, what that is? Like, what the heck do I mean when I say simple harmonic motion? Any ideas, even if they're off the wall, just shout them out. Group of things moving at the same time. Okay, group of things moving at the same time. Any other thoughts what simple harmonic motion could be? I was going to say, try breaking the words apart. Simple, it makes sense, right? Basic, straightforward. What does harmonic mean? What does that word mean? Move together and work together. Move together, work together, right? If you're working in harmony with your partner, you guys are working together and you're kind of you're matched up and doing work well. Those of you that, I don't know music, I apologize. Those of you that are in band or sing choir or anything, like what, what's a harmony or what does harmony mean in the musical context? It sounds pretty together. Oh, I don't know. Sounds good music. together. Oh. <laughs> Anything else? I mean, John has a good Help me out, because I don't know music well. My wife would know. Well, that depends. There's, there's, there's different types Guitar of song. harmony. There's okay. Like, like, harmony between, like, two different instruments, and so you're playing different notes. Okay. But they sound good together. They, like, complement and yeah. work together. That's okay, good. that's good. What is another example of a, like, musical... Uh, you have one person singing the melody and the harmony of the background. Okay. I think I know generally what a melody is. The melody I'm very is like, ignorant. The melody is like what you're actually hearing, like the lead singer, and then the harmony is like the background. Like, oh! Like every other note. Oh, like, yeah, sing harmony. You, I know what that is now. And to clarify, it's not like easy to sing harmony, correct? It's not easy. It's not as hard as the melody, but it's not easy. Okay. I've heard of that before. Like, someone can sing harmony well. Um, oh. <laughs> all right. So, so those answers actually match what this means in physics. Um, motion. Guys, guys, bear with me for a little bit. So, motion makes sense. Things are moving. So it's something that's not complicated, simple, basic, harmonic. Things are working together, they're in rhythm, they're in sync, and it's moving. Uh, a key example that'll help you like latch on to what the heck this means, a pendulum. A pendulum is an example of simple harmonic motion, right? It's a repeated rhythm. That's where like the harmony comes from. Uh, things, if... You, you can have things that are in sync, in a certain harmony together. They're moving together, right? And then it's motion, right? We're going to be looking at things moving, um, but that, that's in and in a nutshell. So harmonic oscillators. What does oscillation mean? Oscillator. Up and down? No. Right? You guys got an um, electric toothbrush? Have you heard them uh, uh, like advertise like brush. this toothbrush is thirty thousand oscillations per second, right? That toothbrush head vibrates; it goes back and forth. That's an oscillation. Uh, a pendulum; it goes back or it goes forward and back. That's one oscillation. One oscillation is like a rotation or a back and forth. Like a rotational motion. What's that? You're talking about like rotation. That sounds like it belongs in rotational motion. They're linked. Yeah, this is specifically linked. harmonic motion. There's weird crossover between oscillations and rotations. I don't want to. We can talk about those when we get into it. Just okay. there's an overlap, but you're right. They are different. And then the other one is the energy, right? We're going to talk about the motion, the, the swinging back and forth, the rhythm. But then we're also going to talk about the energy of like swinging or being in a wave, that kind of stuff. But anyway, this is just me giving you like a little taste test of the last two units. Uh, unit seven. Is anybody into cars? Oh, what the movie? Yeah, what the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a good movie. Have you ever heard the word torque? Yeah. Torque? Yeah. Tor Come on. Uh, anybody into power tools? <laughs> Right? Anybody use power tools and cordless yeah. drills and impacts? Or, yeah. 
they're rated for a certain amount of torque. I don't understand. What? I hear it in the car commercials. I don't understand. Torque, <laughs> to summarize it, it's a twisting force. It's how hard you can twist something. That's all it is. So we're going to talk about torque. It's the force that causes rotation. So it's a twisting. And then we're going to look at the rotational motion that comes from applying a torque or a twisting force. So say like, That's all it is. Like, so say it had like 600 pounds of, pounds of speed? Yes, pound feet. Pound feet of torque. In cars, engines are advertised right. as having a horsepower, which we know power. Let's, okay, More. someone tell me, what is power? The basic definition of what power is. Whenever you say that, I think like uh, home improvements and now like willpower. It was in the energy unit. What was power? No. Huh? No. What'd you say? No. Just say it. No. Please, no. like. Yes, see, that's why I want you to say it. Even if it was wrong, I wouldn't care. Maggie said work over time. Power is how much work you can do in a certain amount of time. Right? Cars with high horsepower are able to do more work in less time. That's why they accelerate so fast. But it's the torque that makes them uh, the, actually be able to... <laughs> yeah, the torque is the second variable that you know cars are rated. They'll say this much horsepower, this much torque. The torque is specifically how much twist, like how much twisting force the engine can do. If you've noticed, diesel pickup trucks, if you look at their specs, they'll have like 300 horsepower. Pretty average. It's a big truck. Well, that's decent. But then they'll have like 900 pound-feet of torque. I've heard like horsepower is like how fast you can go, and like torque is how far you can pull, like how fast you can pull that. Um, Not, I saw some meme about it. There, I know what you're talking about. Some of them are really bad from a physics standpoint. Some of them say like horsepower is how fast you hit the wall. Torque is how far the wall moves after yeah, you hit yeah, that's, it. that's trash. That's <laughs> terrible. And you guys should know that. You guys should be thinking momentum, momentum is what momentum. impacts momentum. how far the wall moves. Good. That's part of the even everyday value of physics to me. Even if you never become a scientist or work in a science field, you can hear stuff like that. Like, hey, that, that's that not true. Oh, no. That's that Wait, doesn't make any oh, sense. And here's why, right? Or you can see, you know, gimmicky advertising. You know, like the an example, the Tesla Cybertruck. Remember when that was released and they had that video of it having a tug of war against the uh, Ford F one fifty? Does anybody remember that? I never saw that. No. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna yes. since we have time. Did you know that Laura Croft was just like a Tesla? Two stories. I pictures. Not the recent ones. ones. No, no, like it's not a recent picture. It's the first two movies. Oh my gosh. Right. Tesla right? No. <laughs> All right, so you guys, this was a video that Tesla made advertising their new Tesla Cybertruck. And it was basically a tug of war against a Ford F-150. Right? There was a lot of criticism, right? Because the Cybertruck destroyed the F-150, the standard for pickup trucks. Well, when you stop and think about it, one, is that a fair evaluation of a vehicle's like quality or value? Is the tug of war the measure? Sure. Well, it matters for like weight and traction. Yeah, but but think about it. The Tesla Cybertruck. Did you know that thing weighs like six thousand pounds? It's absolutely. Ma it might even weigh more. It's massively heavy because it's got all these batteries. Well, remember, I'm going to ask you guys. Friction. Do you remember when we talked about friction? What was the equation for friction? What was the two variables that determined the friction force in something? Motion. No. Mass. Kind of, yes. That's one of them. Specifically, the normal force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ethan's right. He said mass, and that's 
indirectly correct. Friction force equals normal force. Well, the normal force is just the opposite of the mass or gravitational force. So Ethan's correct. This essentially is the mass. What was the other variable? If I write it, will you remember it? Probably not. Remember this mu? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys remember it? You know what it was? Nope. This should be static. Oh, I about that. Remember there's mu static and mu kinetic? It's the coefficient of friction. Right? Do you remember the coefficient was basically how much the two substances gripped each other? Right? Asphalt and rubber, a lot of grippiness. But does metal and ice have a lot of grippiness? No, they, they're slippery materials. So this would be really low. So the only th two things that determine how much friction force, which is what you need to drive a car, right? You apply friction force and the ground opposes you and pushes you forward. The only two things that can impact it are your mass, Right, the normal force of whatever your object is, and how grippy they are. So one, the video doesn't show, that Tesla could have a really, really grippy tire increasing this, whereas the truck had you know, normal, you know, average tires. Well, that wouldn't be a fair test. Two, which truck weighs more? The F-150 or the giant battery-laden Cybertruck? I'll give you a hint, it's the Cybertruck has way more force, therefore, more friction. Chunky boy. Yes, so if the Cybertruck can apply a lot more friction to the tires to push itself than the F-150, who's going to win? The Cybertruck. It doesn't even have rear <laughs> my, my point is, when I watched that, I was like, wait a minute, that's a terrible test. That's not a real comparison. That's true, and that's partially it's why bad. this yeah. class can be so valuable, even if you never go into science. Because you start to get a scientific mindset where if people make claims, they need to have evidence to support it. And you look at a you know gimmicky ad like that, right? And you can critique it and say, like, that's just an advertising scheme. Like, they didn't actually list all the info or set up the conditions, blah, blah, blah. That'll help you. And my main example is if you're voting and people have views on climate change or this, that, things that are scientific, and they have a view and they give their reason, you can critique that from a scientific perspective. Or whether their solution is actually valid. Or yeah. Or they, they say, say, I, I believe science. This, and then, like, if it doesn't, but then you can, like, think logically, well, that couldn't work, or that couldn't be enforced. Yeah. Because, like, with in, uh, environmental science classes, it has to fit into the social, economic, and um, cultural, culture. I don't remember. There was three of them. But yeah. Anyway, that, like, you have to put all these things into consideration yep. before you start throwing out these ideas. Yeah, and in general, like, you, you can look at, you know, a candidate's views, and if they say, I believe climate change doesn't exist just because you're like i'm not listening to you on that topic yeah because that's completely unscientific right so you can at the end of the day if all else fails you can become a better better voter at least a more well-rounded voter to put people in power that actually know what they're talking about or actually back up what they believe in with reason and logic especially scientific anyway sorry for that tangent um that was really Interesting, too. Um, I can't even remember how we... Oh, we got on that with torque. Back to this, this unit. Torque is how much twist an engine has. Another thing, electric motor versus a gasoline motor. Electric motors can apply torque instantly. All you got to do is turn on the electricity. An engine, you got to wait for it to get up to speed and RPM to put out torque. So, so that's not fair. Because Tesla can put apply torque and start pulling, and then the, the race is over. So, so there's an unfairness from a physics standpoint that you could critique. Like, I don't really buy your marketing scheme. So electric cars should be faster then? Like, not necessarily. 
If they can just like a they can just apply torque faster. They they can almost all the time they can launch faster. Because okay. all you have to do is turn on electricity. And then your motor is full power. So it'll take off faster mm -hmm. because you can apply torque more quickly. Mm -hmm. And and you can apply a lot of torque. Like electric motors are very they can twist a lot, which is a, a benefit. However, you need a very big motor and battery to go a high speed, right? To, to accelerate quickly and drive very fast, sustained, you need a lot of power. That's kind of a disadvantage for electric cars, whereas engines with like twin turbos, mm -hmm. they get better the faster you go. Like you get more power the harder the engine works. Mm -hmm. So that pays, so anyway, I don't want to, we can talk about that later. I can, I like critiquing like drag races and stuff. Uh, Ethan, quick question? No, I was, my parents work just called me. Your parents work? They usually, yeah, they call me from work and they've never called me. Okay, you school. feel free, yeah, step out in the hall and give them a call. Thank you for letting me know, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, all that to say, sorry, long drawn out, that's what unit seven is, right? We're gonna basically, um, so in the same way, that guys, the same way that dynamics is basically just doing kinematics but looking at the forces, right? You take this and add force, and therefore you get dynamics, right? This was how things moved, and this was the F equals MA that caused them to move. Rotation right here, torque and rotational motion is the same thing. We did a little bit of circular motion. But we just looked at how stuff moved. We did a little forces, but we're going to really dig into like circular and angular motion and the torque, the force that causes them to rotate. So that, in a nutshell, is what unit six and seven will be kind of about. Um, does anybody have questions on those two units? Again, I'm just introducing. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to kind of get it on your mind and throw it out there. Um, and it's it's really weird to say this, but that's all we have left. Like that's it, and then we're done with content. Like I said, we're going to talk about. We'll review. You know, we can go a review of everything. We can do what you specifically struggle with, and if you honestly ask yourself, like yeah, this unit, I really don't know. Let me know. We'll touch base on that. And we'll have plenty of time to do FRQs, do practice AP tests. Um, there are the the mock test that the Indiana AP program offers. I don't have final details, but that I think is still a thing. So we'll have like a full-blown like practice test yeah, day. Yeah, we should be. I, I They'll let us know or they'll let me know when that's scheduled and whatnot. Um, and I'll let you know as soon as I find out. But regardless, I can give you guys practice AP tests in this class. Because we like we can do... Time. Huh? We yes, well, we have even more time than we normally would, so that's great news. Uh, any other general questions? Anything about this class, what this semester will look like, the AP test, anything for the good of the people, so to speak? Of a bop it? We can measure yeah, it. It's like a twisting. So yeah. Like good question. We can answer that. Um, but seriously, any other questions about the class? Anything? Okay, so I will end the recording um, again today. I, I'm, we're not doing anything. I Technically, we could have... No, I'm, I'm glad I don't have anything for you. Um, we'll ease back into the year, and then, again, my first day teaching for this semester is really going to be tomorrow because it's red day, the snow day threw off everything, mm -hmm. right? Technically, you guys should be doing, well, I don't, I only teach one class, but anyway, it threw stuff off. Um, we will start unit six um, on Wednesday. We'll dive in and get started and go from there. All right, I will stop this.